Welcome everyone, my name is Robbie and this is Robbie in Monila. Now today we have a video that I'm really excited about because we're talking about Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. So when it comes to Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios, I really don't think that it gets enough credit. It's really a great robo-advisor and I don't think a lot of people know about it. Most people know about Betterment and Wealthfront, but Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios I think tends to get buried in with all the other great products that Charles Schwab does offer. So today we're gonna to talk about a lot of different stuff, the fees, we're gonna talk about ETFs, we're gonna talk about the different account features that you have available to you, and we're gonna compare it to Betterment and Wealthfront. And so let's go ahead and let's get into the video. Okay, everyone, so I have my computer open, so let's go ahead and let's dive into Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolio. So I'm over here, I'm on the home screen, uh, intelligent.schwab.com, and so what we're doing is, I just wanna go through some of the different features of this company. I mean, there's so many great features, and I wanna compare it to, of course, Betterment and Wealthfront, like I mentioned. So let's start off and kind of look through and go to this How It Works button, because I wanna discuss how basically robo-advisors work in general, just in case you're not very familiar with them yet. So it says, uh, the first thing it says is invest for a reason. So when you're investing, you're usually trying to save money and uh, invest that money for different things, right? Many people, of course, are trying to invest and save for retirement, but there's also other reasons that you might wanna save money. So there's the child's education, there's retirement, so there's maybe you need an emergency fund. There's all sorts of different ways that you need to maybe save money. And so in something like this with most robo-advisors these days, they have like different buckets of money that you can create. So you can save money uh, based on like how quickly you need the money. So maybe if you need money in 10 years, they're gonna manage it differently than if you need money in one year. And so with Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios, you can like create a bucket and you can create multiple buckets, I think up to 10, and you can specify how quickly you need the money, and then Charles Schwab Portfolio will manage that money correctly for you depending on how quickly you need it, what it's for, things like that. So robo-advisors are really a way of investing money and saving money, but being able to kind of put it into one account that is supposed to basically manage all of the funds and the fees and everything together as one. Instead of having like an account for child's education and account for um, your new vacation that's coming up in two years and account for your retirement. So it kind of lumps it all together. Now if we go down, it's we're talking about um, Charles Schwab Portfolios is designed to help you. Um, so it's got innovative technology and we're gonna kind of compare this and a few to Wealthfront and Betterment because they're kind of the top standard when it comes to tech for um, robo-advisors. So let's go down to investing made easier with Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. This is showing you kind of how it's going to go from all these different funds. So 1,845 funds being ETFs, exchange traded funds, they're going to basically cipher down these different funds and then they're going to handpick 53 different funds picked by the experts, which is 2.9% of the funds available in the universe of funds. And that's what they're doing. They're taking all these different like ETFs and they're going to basically cipher them down and they're going to give you the 53 best friends funds and then create this diversified portfolio using these different ETFs. Now, of course, uh, for you to manage all of these different ETFs would be quite hard. I mean, 53 different funds is not an easy thing to do, right? So that's why they have this technology. It's designed to help you basically manage your risk tolerance. It's designed to help you um, invest for a higher return while being able to do things like portfolio rebalancing, which we'll get to in a second. So let's keep going here. Um, it's also designed to help you with tax efficiency and we're gonna come back to this in a few um, because, well, just 
Just wait for it. Keep watching. Keep watching. We're going to come back to this one. So that's about it on this page. So really, a robo-advisor is designed to help you give your money to a, a company like Charles Schwab or a Betterment or a Wealthfront, and they have this technology that they've designed that's patented that they're going to use to basically invest your money the best way possible and manage what's most importantly, which is the risk associated with all your money. So it's really a great thing for a lot of people who are not interested in doing this all for themselves. Okay, let's go back to the homepage of Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. Okay, everyone, so I'm back here on uh, the homepage for Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. Now, the thing is, Charles Schwab's kind of weird. There's like two different directories, uh, directory listings, I'm not sure. Uh, what's going on here, but there's intelligent.schwab.com, which is how I'm directed to this page when I'm coming from, I think, inside my brokerage account. There's another page that I actually wanted to uh, use because it's got some different pages inside here that I think are better for us to look at. So there's schwab.com uh, backslash or forward slash, forward slash? Is that forward slash? Uh, Intelligent-portfolios. And so when we go over here, we're gonna take a look and compare solutions. So what we're doing here is we wanna now talk about the fees for this broker dealer. Now, this is why I love Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. It is an amazing portfolio, or it's an amazing robo-advisor in terms of the fees that it charge. It beats everyone, it beats everyone. There's no one that's actually competing with this, in my opinion, and let me tell you why. So. We go down and we can kind of see the fees and the minimums here. And this is uh, an important part to understand, of course, that Charles Schwab does have a 5,000 minimum. So if that's important to you, if you don't have $5,000, of course, you can't use the platform. But if you do have at least $5,000, then this is going to be an option for you. So if we go with Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios, not the premium, just regular Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios, then we have no commissions charged, and that is where I wanted to start because commissions are a huge thing when it comes to robo-advisors. And when we go, for example, if we compare this now to Betterment and Wealthfront, let's go see how much of a uh, management fee that these are charging. So when we go over here, uh, right now I'm in Betterment, and let's go ahead and try to find out uh, when we go to the invest area, and let's try to find the actual um, uh, amount that they charge you for a uh, fee So we're gonna go look for the fees here in betterment and Let's see the fees are Actually, I think the fees might be in their FAQ. Let's try to find it there uh, fees are Let's see here are the fees so um, The main thing I want to see here is the investing so investing fee is 0.25% per year so on your invested balance so whichever covers all trading costs basically what we need to look at now and say uh, compare is that we see that betterment has a 0.25 percent charge for just a regular account that's their management fee and then there's another fee if you want the premium service which is 0.40 percent and this premium service allows you to have uh, over the phone access to a team of CFPs. So basically financial professionals, financial advisors, certified financial um, professionals that are able to help you with any questions that you might have. Some people, this is great and some people don't need this. So an extra 0.4% might be a bit for you. It may not, it depends on what you want. So we can now compare this to Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios because you actually get the same thing here Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios Premium. So if you have at least $25,000 to invest, if you want to really compare the Betterment solution having access to financial professionals, then this is where you're going to want to look because this does also allow you to have uh, access to financial professionals. And there's again no um, main, I'm sorry, there's, there's, there's a fee of $300 to start and then there's a $30 per month um, amount that you're gonna have to pay. So let's kind of think about this for a second. I'm gonna get my phone out and I'm gonna start um, 
I'm gonna record so you can see the numbers here. So let's get the calculator open and let's see a comparison between these two. So for example, if you have, let's just say $100,000. So if you have $100,000 and you want access to a CFP and things like that in Betterment, you're gonna have to pay 0.40%. And that's gonna be, we're gonna go with $100,000 times 0 0.004. And that's gonna be $400 a year. So Betterment's gonna charge you $400 a year to have their service. Now, what is Charles Schwab gonna charge you? Well, there's a $300 complete upfront charge. So of course, just in the first year, Betterment is going to be cheaper because Charles Schwab is 300 plus another $30 per month. So 30 times 12 is another $360 per year. So Charles Schwab every year is gonna charge $360, which is going to be less than the amount that Betterment charged on $100,000, which is uh, $400. So right off the bat, it's going to be a little bit less money for you to use Charles Schwab. Over time, let's say over probably a 10, 15 year period, you're going to pay less money with this service on Charles Schwab than Betterment. But if you have a lot more money, then it gets a lot better. So if you have like $500,000, for Betterment, you're gonna pay 0.004, you're gonna pay 2,000 a year. Now with Schwab, you're gonna pay 0.004 times, oh, sorry, not, uh, you're gonna pay the same $30 per month, and that's $360. So that's the difference. If you get, if you have a high account balance, if you have a lot of money with Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios, with Betterment, you're gonna have a lot less of a fee with the premium service if you want access to a financial advisor. Okay, let's say you don't care about access to a financial advisor. So let's go ahead and look and see, again, compare these two again. So we already know that there's no fee, there's no advisory fees for Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios, and we know that there's 0.25 fee for Betterment, which we can see right here. Okay, so right off the bat, you're gonna pay more money for Betterment for the year. Uh, also because when it comes to the ETFs, each ETF has a fee inside it. Now with Betterment, even though you're paying for 0.25%, you're still gonna pay for that ETF expense ratio. It's always gonna be cooked into the ETF. There's really no way around that. Now, so to make things equal, you're gonna pay this ETF fee between 0.03 and 0.50 in Betterment. You're gonna pay the same ETF fee in Charles Schwab. Um, there's no way to get around that, but they're all, they're both gonna be pretty low fees. Now, if you go over to Wallfront, kind of the same thing. So let's go to Wallfront and let's kind of see where their um, their fees are. So I'm gonna hit investing and we're gonna go try to find the fees for Betterment. Here we go, right here. And so the same thing. So 0.25% annual fee for Betterment. And so that's basically what I'm trying to get across in this part. So basically in terms of these two robo-advisors, it's really hard to beat a, a robo-advisor like Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios that does not charge a fee for the regular account of at least, if you have at least 5,000 or more and you don't care about having a certified financial planner um, access to one, um, it's gonna be hard to beat Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. Now, if you do want access to a CFP, then maybe Betterment could be close to being uh, something that might be workable for you if you don't have a ton of money, like I showed you. If you have like $500,000, it's still gonna be a lot less money with Charles Schwab because Schwab is paying, uh, is charging an uh, annual fixed rate. Well, basically it's a monthly fixed rate. So a fixed rate versus a percentage, which is what Betterment's charging. And then the two are paying, charging 0.25% in advisory fees. So this is what uh, I hope you're understanding. Charles Schwab definitely is gonna win on fees. It's gonna be very, very, very hard to find a robo-advisor that's gonna beat this. Now, let me kind of explain to you why, and this ties into Charles Schwab ETFs. Let's explain to you how Charles Schwab is able to do this. Now, there's, in the whole grand scheme of things, what's going on in the world of robo-advisors and just general like Robinhood and M1 Finance and all these companies that are going to zero commissions, how are they able to make money? And so the thing with Charles Schwab is they've been able to 
I maybe I'd call it vertically integrate their product line. And so what they've done is they've been able to create their own ETFs. And so let's talk about ETFs now. And we're gonna go over here. Um, I'm going into my actual uh, Charles Schwab brokerage account to kind of look at some ETFs real quick because I wanna show you uh, that Charles Schwab has their own ETFs and they have some quite, some pretty great ETFs. And I'm just gonna go straight to the first or second one here, uh, the second one, the Schwab US Broad Market ETF. And this is like a, a ETF that's similar to the Vanguard Total Market ETF. And it's, it's tracking the Dow Jones US Broad Stock Market. And so it's, the index includes the largest 25,000 publicly traded US companies um, and it has an expense ratio of 0.03%, which is very, very, very low. So you have something like this in Charles Schwab and they have all of these different ETFs available uh, and they have quite a few ETFs. And so how is Charles Schwab making money? One of the ways is they own their ETFs now. So when you put money into Charles Schwab intelligent portfolios, it invests in its own ETFs as the primary ETF. And I'll show you in a second what that means because there are secondary ETFs, but this is how they're making money. Another thing to quickly mention before uh, we move on here is that there's also different um, asset classes within Charles Schwab. So there's, uh, well not asset classes, style boxes. So there's domestic equity, there's international equity. So if we click here, we're gonna get uh, exposure to international um, ETFs that are gonna track to, um, this one's developed markets XUS. So developed market XUS might have Canada in it, might have the UK, it might have different European countries, Hong Kong, Singapore, so places like that. And again, 0.06% expense ratio, so cheap um, ETF. And so again, you have all these options of ETFs. Now, if we go over, uh, let's go back to Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios and let's take a look at the ETFs that they show in, um, in here. So again, I'm on intelligent.schwab.com and we're gonna go to where it says uh, this part where it says more information. And we're gonna take a look at the ETFs available. And when we go down here, these are the uh, expanded asset classes. So in, you have stocks, these are all the different asset classes that they might break uh, the potential ETFs into. These are the fixed income, and then these are the commodities, so it's some gold and other precious metal, and then cash. So uh, if we take a look at the category, we can see what they use for each of the categories. So for example, US large company, Schwab uses its own SCHX, and that's a Schwab US large cap um, ETF. Okay, now so when Schwab goes around and it, it, it creates a portfolio of ETFs for you based on, their, um, based on their algorithm, they're going to be putting money into different uh, ETFs for you and they're gonna weight them how they think it should be invested. Based on, again, things like what you're gonna do with the money, how old you are, your risk tolerance, all sorts of different factors, and then they're gonna put it in here. So what's interesting about Schwab, um, which is not very different than uh, Wealthfront and Betterment, is that there's uh, other these other accounts that are secondary ETFs. And so secondary ETFs are supposed to allow Schwab to help you with something called tax loss harvesting, and that is going to be um, basically lowering your taxes as long as your uh, intelligent portfolios isn't in some type of um, uh, account like a ta uh, tax free like for example like an IRA or something like that if it's in a regular brokerage account they can do things like sell uh, ETF let's say if for example SCHX the Schwab US large cap fund had a bad year and they wanted to tax loss harvest, meaning maybe it lost some money, they could sell this and they could then buy VOO, which is supposed to be a similar ETF. And so that allows uh, Charles Schwab to take some losses that will then go into um, 
basically on your taxes and then this will potentially reduce things like capital gains tax maybe you could write some taxes off so um, this is one of the benefits of having a robo advisor they're doing this for you they're tax loss harvesting and so uh, there is a caveat to this which is very important for you to understand that you need to have fifty thousand dollars and we'll go back to the intelligent um, uh, portfolios uh, area here where it says the features that you have and so let's find the tax loss harvesting where is tax loss harvesting here tax loss harvesting when you hit the I here it'll tell you that tax loss harvesting is available for clients with invested assets of fifty thousand dollars so you have to have fifty thousand dollars with Schwab to have tax loss harvesting and this is an important part for us to understand with Betterment and Wealthfront because you don't need to have um, any extra amount of money with either of those companies to get tax loss harvesting. So in a way, if you have a small um, uh, portfolio, there is a potential that you do have the ability to, um, to, to pay less money in taxes, which may offset the fee in a way. So I'm gonna just control F uh, tax loss, oops. Here we go. So passive plus unlocks the potential in your portfolio. Tax loss harvesting available available for all accounts. Okay. So Wealthfront has tax loss harvesting available for, no matter how much money you have. Same with Betterment. Is that going to uh, is that going to give you enough money to uh, basically justify the fee that they're charging you? It's possible. Um, there is a possibility that the percent that that will gain on your portfolio could be up to 0.25 percent, 25 basis points. Um, but there's a good chance it won't. Um, but it's possible that would probably be the upper end of what a tax loss harvesting might be able to do for you. So I would still say Charles Schwab is going to win here, straight having low fee or no fee uh, management fee. Um, and not having tax loss harvesting on the lower accounts. So if you have over $50,000 with Schwab, of course you get tax loss harvesting and it's gonna be um, equivalent to Betterment and Wealthfront. Um, so that's the uh, comparison there and that's an important comparison for us to make. So let's go back and quickly take some looks at the, a look at these different um, areas where our money could go into. So they have it broken down into, uh, they have stocks. So these are all ETFs that would invest in stocks. You have international exposure, you have REITs, so real estate investment trusts. So these are ways to own basically uh, properties that generate income without actually owning properties that generate income, just investing in these ETFs. Um, and so you get all this exposure. Then you have um, another category, which is like the fixed income. So things like bonds, bills and notes, right? So these are um, safer assets than stocks, and we have U.S. Treasuries, and we have uh, um, investment-grade corporate bonds, so things like that. And then we're gonna have uh, gold and precious metals. Um, and then there's cash, of course. And so cash is something that I really wanna touch on in this because it's very important, because there's some people, there's some haters, some haters for Charles Schwab when it comes to cash, and I do wanna talk about that. So this is what we have. Uh, these are all it's like a, a ton of information in here and this is a, a you know you can go through this it's easy to find it and you can go through all the different stuff and it'll tell you all these different ETFs and how they uh, can potentially um, break down the ETFs for you and add these to your uh, intelligent portfolios robo advisor account so now let's take a look real quick at the um, let's go back to the home page Okay, so we're back on the home page, and what I wanted to show you here is that uh, down in the kind of middle of the home page is automatic rebalancing. This is something that every robo advisor um, has, and so it's not the most, um, in, you know, it's not something that's a, a great thing because everyone has it. it every robo advisor should have this option and capability. So as long as a robo-advisor has it, okay, they get like the check mark, right? So this has it, but to quickly explain why this is good, um, take a look at this chart here, and it shows um, the risk based on standard deviation, 
and it shows a rebalanced risk that's rebalanced annually in blue and it never rebalanced in yellow. So a portfolio that's rebalanced annually has less risk, okay, based on standard deviation. Now, okay, that's important for us to know, but then we can see, uh, does what's that effect have on the return? So does that have an effect? Do you make less money on your account if you have less risk? And here we can see that you actually make more money um, when you do rebalancing. So annualized return, rebalanced annually is higher than never rebalanced. So what you see here is taking less risk gives you more return. And that's exactly what you want when you are investing. All right, so rebalancing definitely is very important. It can allow you to take less risk and have even a better return. So, and that's exactly what you want when you're investing. So let's go uh, down a bit more here. Uh, we're gonna skip tax efficiency because we already touched on that which was tax loss harvesting, but we wanna take a look at the range of accounts because that's very important to many people as well. So the different account options with Schwab Intelligent Portfolios, um, there is a there are a range of different accounts available. There's IRAs, IRA rollovers, retirement, and different trusts. So um, there's traditional and Roth IRAs, very good. So those are two important accounts that of course are the most popular accounts to have. Um, then we have a rollover IRA. So if you have money in a different IRA, you can roll your money into this account. Um, then if you're self-employed, they have something called the SEP IRA. If you're not self-employed, you don't have a business, don't worry about this. But if you are self-employed, then you might wanna look into this. This could be uh, something that would be great for you. Um, if you have a small business, a simple IRA, Again, you might want to take a look at this if you have a small business. So if you're, um, and so there's other things, so we don't have to go through all of this, but if you have a brokerage account, there are different ways that you can um, open this brokerage account uh, for things like estate planning purposes. So you can have your own account, so it's just yours. You can also have something like uh, joint tenants with rights of survivorship. So two people co-own an account, the person who dies and passes away the other person would then inherit the account so there's no like going through probate or anything like that so things like this are important now take a look through all these things we're not going to go through all of them but there's just all these different accounts available for you um, the one thing that you won't see here is a 529 plan and unfortunately that's uh, something that a lot of people want but there is a 529 plan with Wealthfront which is an area where Wealthfront does win against Schwab. So if you go here and you see you hit college. So if you if you really want an account that's gonna allow you to um, to put money in a, if you want, not an account, if you want exposure with all of your money combined in this robo-advisor, if you want the robo-advisor to allocate some money into a 529, then you're gonna want to not go with Schwab um, unless you're okay with just instead of putting it into a specific 529 you're okay with doing it outside intelligent portfolios on your own or if you're okay with putting it into a different type of account like a Roth or um, or just a regular brokerage account to save for college education for your child that's also possible as well so uh, 529 plans, unfortunately, not available with Schwab. Okay, everyone, so the last thing we wanna talk about here in Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios is the cash. So Charles Schwab uses cash in their portfolios, and I think it's very important for us to understand why, because there's a lot of people out there who see cash in their portfolio, and they think it's too much cash, or they don't think that it's good that they have this cash, and I'm gonna kind of maybe nip some of those uh, problems in the bud. So um, I'm here on intelligent.schwab.com. I'm going to go to FAQ and then I'm going to go down and I'm going to hit this uh, portfolio development. And then we're going to go down and we're going to take a look at these examples of asset allocation. So right off the bat, take a look. Investor one is a 30 year old. Uh, investor two is a 40 year old. Investor uh, three is a 65 year old. So they're older, older, kind of middle age and then kind of younger at 30. So when we look at cash, uh, it's very important for us to understand why you use cash in a portfolio. Um, 
And basically it's because cash can have a component in your overall allocation, your asset allocation. It can be a strategic place to have money given certain other factors. So let's look here. So these are the investors. Uh, investor one, who's younger, is in 85% stocks. Two is in 61% stocks. Investor three is in 28% stocks. So if we go down and we kind of look at how much are in bonds, fixed income, uh, we see that the 40, uh, 40 year old has quite a bit in bonds. 23% of their portfolio is invested in bonds. And then commodities, is, there's 5% invested and there's 10% in cash. And so some people would look at this and say, as a 40 year old, I don't want to have 23% uh, of my portfolio in bonds. And I don't want to have this 10% uh, in cash. That's too much for me. And what I'm kind of here to say is that cash is okay in certain situations. And let's go for, through an example of that. So for example, um, let's just pick a portfolio. Let's use uh, large US fundamental. Um, assume that this is the most risky ETF. And it's not, but just assume it is. And Schwab might say, um, because we have cash, we're, we're okay to put more money into this more risky ETF. It's, an, it's a risk adjusted return. It, they're risk adjusting the portfolio allocation. By utilizing cash, they have the ability to put money into other areas of your portfolio that might have more risk. That's what they're doing with the cash. So I think I went through um, an example. I have a blog that I, I did this like two years ago, but I compared Betterment, uh, Betterment or Wealthfront, can't remember which of the two, for Shaw Schwab Intelligent Portfolios at the time. Uh, it was for me, my own portfolio. Betterment had me in 10% bonds while Schwab had me in 6% uh, cash and like 4% bonds or something like that. So basically what happened was Schwab risk adjusted my returns Betterment had more money in bonds and they had no cash. Whereas Schwab had more money in cash, but they had less in cash and more money in equities. And so it was a risk adjusted. And in a way it should balance out to however the broker, um, the robo advisor feels that it should given a risk adjusted return. So I just wanna make sure everyone understands that having cash in portfolio may be a strategic move and it may be okay given asset allocation and the mix of investments that you have. Okay everyone, so thanks so much for watching. I think at this point you understand I really like Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. I definitely think it should be on your radar if you're looking at any type of robo-advisor. If you're looking at a Betterment, if you're looking at a Wealthfront, this should definitely be considered. Of course, there are some downsides to the company not any robo-advisor is completely perfect, so there's a 5,000 minimum. So if you don't have $5,000, then you're not gonna be able to invest with this. So you might need to go with Betterment or Wealthfront instead. Um, of course, there's not the capability if you want like a 529 plan. So if you want a college education plan for your child, it's not gonna be available in this. And also the other drawback is that if you need to have tax loss harvesting, there's a $50,000 minimum for that. Of course, you need to keep the fee in consideration because there's no fee on this. So if you go to a Betterment or a Wealthfront that does have tax house harvesting, you also have to pay a higher fee. So that needs to be something that kind of has an equilibrium. So you need to take it into consideration. So maybe this is still better even though you don't get tax house harvesting, okay? So that's all we have for today. Please, if you like this video, hit that like button that really really helps me out. Subscribe, that would be amazing. I would really appreciate it. And also, please watch the next video on the end screen so it also supports me as well. So thanks everyone so much for watching and we will see you in that next video.